Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Doom Patrol. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with Jane's situation, because it's really interesting, because obviously, you know, she found out, like, one of the train stations shut down, so she's bringing it up to the others, like, oh. Okay, don't you think it's weird that basically the others went away just when Miranda happens to pop up? She just thinks it's too much of a coincidence. But then Miranda brings up something interesting where she's basically like, it's a sign that K is getting better. It's not that they disappeared, they moved on because they're no longer necessary. I'm like, oh, so it's it's basically like a kid that has their imaginary friend when they get older, they no longer need them. Kind of comparing it to another comic book property. Spoilers a little bit for Happy. It kind of plays like that out for plays like that for kids in general in that universe but definitely between Haley and you know um, Happy at the end of the series because um, that's how the show was cancelled regardless the fact that the matter is it kind of works in that regard so it's like they represent her fractured psyche and if she's getting better she doesn't need the other personalities because they were meant to be her way to kind of combat her trauma you know um, but then it's kind of like oh if she's getting better like it well it's kind of like wait is that what's actually happening and so Kay talks about the fact that she wants her doll Harry um, I think one that is saying. Okay, we also learn like what the significance of the whale is. Her dad would constantly put her in the bottom of the whale, so it's like no wonder that's like such a a contentious like trauma trigger for not just her but all of them. And the way it kind of goes down, it seems like Jane wasn't around for a lot of that. I mean, to be fair, Jane's probably a lot more of a recent. She's definitely a more recent personality because she didn't start going by Jane until like the seventies when she was kind of locked up in a mental institution and stuff like that. So that's when Jane came around. But Miranda's one of the earliest ones that's been around since. Kay was a little girl, uh, or at the very least when she became a teenager at that point in time. But um, so it is kind of interesting that a lot of that is still. I think Jane feels it as a part of Kay. She feels a lot of that fear, that trauma of like stay away from the damn um well because you, because it triggers something in Kay that I think all of them can feel. But the fact of the matter is, I don't think Jane knew the ins and outs of it until like stuff comes up this episode where she's learning a little bit and stuff. Well, we'll get to it soon enough. Um. But the fact of the matter is, uh, Jane is saying that she'll be the one to go get Harry, which they're like, okay, if, cause for her, it's like, because she's talking about Miranda, it's like, Miranda, you're all about, you know what Kay wants, and this is what she wants, so she's the one that dictates how things gotta go, so she wants the doll, I'm, I'm, a, she wants the stuffed animal, I'm gonna go get, it, uh, you know, Harry, and I thought it was actually super sweet, that the first person she went to was Cliff, but Cliff was busy with the whole Clara situation this episode, so Jane didn't want to interfere, I think maybe Jane probably also fears that weird thing of like, well, I know how much your relationship with your daughter is, and I don't want to be, because, because the whole thing is always like, don't make me your daughter figure, and you know, I'm sure Jane probably feels a little weird, because like, Cliff is kind of that father figure, I mean, she kind of already had a father figure, more so in, um, Niles, but obviously that got messed up, and it's hard to say because Cliff, I think, kind of borderlines is both that father figure and it just straight up a friend. But usually, when it go and gets tough, she kind of feels like she can rely on Cliff more than anybody. But when the time came, she just couldn't bring herself to do it because she didn't want to bother him. But um, then she goes to Larry, which Larry's dealing with his own thing because the spirit's trying to tell him something, but he's not sure because the spirit's kind of using a lot of his past, like a lot of stuff that he'd rather not face and have to deal with. But he's like, I'm tired of your riddles. Like, if you need to tell me something straight up. Tell me what is it you want, but the spirit's not as straightforward as he wanted it to be. So Jane asks him to come along. Um, she just says we're going to alternate because like you can, she's like very like solemn about it at first. She just kind of like um, Cliff's kind of busy, so could you? And she's like, just get get your damn bandages on and let's go to Arkansas. Like she kind of like. It was like she was trying to psych herself up by trying to act like no no I'm Jane. Get your ass in gear, Larry, and let's go. Um, but what was interesting, though, is that, because even Larry is like, yeah, Flick could literally take us anywhere, but we're literally been walking for the past 20 minutes. And the fact of the matter is, Jane was like, because Flick doesn't even want to get that, like, a 20-minute walk. She'd rather not even get 20 minutes worth of a walk close enough to this place. Because Larry's like, what is this place? And it's like, oh, this is the place I grew up at. And I think in that moment, I think Larry knows enough to be like, oh, okay, I, I understand. And obviously... And I thought this whole thing was interesting because like, I think for Jane, she gets a little existential because it's like, yeah, like helping Kay is great because that's what this is all supposed to be about and everything. But for her, it's like, because Larry, it's like, you never thought you'd be on the chopping block because now it's a situation of like, because she thought maybe as a primary, there was something that like, no matter what happens, 
that K will always be able to rely on because, oh, I'm the primary, so I don't have to worry about it. But it's like now it's in a situation that Miranda fills that role that Miranda's kind of all that she potentially needs. So now it's a situation of like when the time comes, if K does get better, that means I'll disappear. And it's understandably a little scared because it's like, you know, you are who you are because, yes, each one of them serves their own role, but each one of them has their own personality. They are their own person, you know. So, but it's like your entire being exists for the sake of protecting K. So, like, you know, when that's kind of part of your identity, you kind of have to serve the purpose. That's kind of what Miranda's all about, saying, like, no, we do the job we're meant to do. Like, everyone's trying to, like, put that in Jane's head, just to do the job we're supposed to do. But at the same time, it's a thing of, like, once again, this is still, you're still kind of a person on your own. So it's like, you don't want to, you know, no longer exist. You don't want to disappear, which Larry totally gets too, because for him, he's, he wants to, he feels like the only way he'll ever be able to move past everything is he, if he ever moves past, forget about Captain Larry Trainer, but he doesn't, because that's a part of who he's been, who he is, that despite all the trauma and everything, that's still a part of him, that he doesn't want it, that part of him to disappear, because he, I think he feels like if that part of him disappears, what will I have left if I'm not Larry Trainer? you know? So they get to the our, our farm on Arkansas, and obviously she touches one of the um, things, and like as a teenager, when she's Miranda, uh, her dad puts her in the well again, and it's like, and she's terrified, and Jane's like, even Miranda was terrified, like, you know, he's a monster, you know? And, uh, cause that's still a lot we don't know about, like, what happened, I mean, this was in the 50, well, it's probably, probably at this point in time, probably like the 60s, maybe, maybe late 50s, early 60s, I mean, depending on how old Jane, uh, K slash Miranda was at the time. So, um, it is a situation, of, cause the last time, the only time we've seen her mom was when she was getting baptized, because it's like, oh, you're, you're possessed or whatever, but then, like, she calls her mom out for like, oh, you know what was going on, no, uh, praying or baptism or, or you know wishing the demons away is going to be enough to erase your sins for being complicit in everything that he's ever done to your daughter you know that was the first and only instance we've ever seen her mom and obviously we never found out what happened to her dad whether he just part of me was almost halfway expecting like when jane got into the well i was almost halfway expecting her to found uh her father's dead body but it seems like you know after they left they he just i guess he eventually just died of old it seemed like everyone's kind of like that because it's like well in larry's case well his wife his ex-wife ended up dying like i think they said from cancer um it seems like her parents just potentially jane's parents just died um uh, in um Rita's case, it seems like her mom just naturally died, you know, eventually, because she said it last episode, like, oh, her mom died peacefully or whatever. But nevertheless, Jane feels like she has to do this because she she even says that there's a line of dialogue where she's basically like, oh, I have to basically so she can prove herself, like prove that she's just as good as Miranda because, you know, she's feeling kind of a bit of inferior because Miranda's kind of like, oh, Miranda's the one that knows Kay so well. She knows what she wants and what she needs. Like all the other personalities look to her and kind of follow behind her. So it's kind of like to kind of get back what you, you know, I think it's a thing where Jane probably kind of took her position for granted because she never thought like because no one else wanted it and now that Miranda took it is now your own existence and being threatened so she gets down there she starts flip out because she's like oh god she can't find you know Harry anywhere but then she looks at a sidewall and it's like there's a letter and Harry because Miranda found him years ago basically she used getting in that well as an she played like you know like oh because like, I thought it was interesting I was like oh wow like there's dad's that scary because even Miranda because that's what Miranda's for she's there she's kind of meant to be that shield 4k so that's all surprised to see her but it's like no that whole thing was a front she played like scared and oh fearful because she knew her dad like he was very pr he was very the same about like how he punished her he put her in that well for a certain amount of time so she knew like all i had to do was wait eventually you'd be away like she knew this would be her perfect opportunity to escape so she left the letter saying the defect in matters i hope you die you basically deserve to basically for all you've done to your own daughter we deserve better than this you know so she won't have to deal with a shitty family like you she'll have us and miranda literally climbed out of that well and jane's like holy crap she did that and she confronts Miranda being like you I didn't know you went through all that you really are the one that's kind of best suited for this so she's like I will fall in line whatever you want it's like good glad you come to the light she throws it in the well I was like wait what and Jane's like what are you doing and she pushes Jane in the well I was like dude and then Jane gets underwater she sees baby face she sees the other two that were missing as well so I'm gonna say baby face baby doll but and it's like Miranda said they'd moved on and they sure as hell didn't because she made it seem like oh they'll be reborn from the well but it's like 
So now this makes makes best the question: Is it what I thought it was? Is it a thing where Miranda is is she trying to force K to heal? Like it makes you wonder: Is does K kind of see what Miranda is really up to, or is it more of a thing of just K just kind of you know because she's kind of you know sadly caught up in her own trauma, like she's just kind of going with the flow sadly. Um, I, I don't know. I'm curious because, like I said, because since Miranda went into the well, it seems like she hasn't been quite the same, you know, so since coming out of it and everything. So that begs the question, like, what is she doing? Is she trying to eventually get rid of all the other personality shows? She can be the only one. Is it because she's like, you guys are unnecessary. I'm the only one that matters. So is it kind of almost self-preservation in her regards of like, no, I want to be the only one. Like, is it her being selfish or is, it, is she twi does she have some twisted notion of believing that this is what's best for Kay? Who knows? But now Jane's kind of been removed from the situation. Now I'm assuming Miranda's going to be more in control and that kind of gets rid of all the, you know, the others are going to fall more in line. This also kind of plays into Jane's fear. She was like, she didn't want to disappear. Now she kind of has. Granted, she's still alive. The others, well, at least we know at least two are dead. The one that was, was, was it Scarlet Harlot? Uh, I think she's... Uh, still, well, we saw her body floating, but we don't know if she's necessarily dead. We don't know if Miranda killed her or not. But regardless, it's like, okay, so I'm very interested to see, like, okay, so where that storyline goes. Another angle to this whole situation is Cliff and Clara spending so much time together. Because, like, I love Cliff kind of explaining certain things. Like, because at one point, Clara gets close to him. He's like, whoa, 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 stay away from there. He's like, basically, there's a blood feud going on between the rats and them. It's like, the, considering all that they've been through, um, end up finding out the fact that the matter is she's getting married to a lady and everything. And it's like, oh, you know, Cliff being like, oh, you know. That's awesome, you know, and I love that he's fixing her breakfast, and he freaks out at one point in time, I was like, what, did you, was it one of the rats, or are you about to have a face off right then and there, it's like, no, he accidentally cooked the finger he left in the fridge, I was like, okay, how, how the hell do you manage to do that, I guess not unless it ended up getting mixed up with the salsa, and I love that even though it was there on top of the pancakes and everything, you still served it to your daughter, it's like, well, I guess it's okay, all the bacteria is going from this severed finger, uh, because uh, it's been, well, it, it's been out and about decaying for a little bit before it was put on ice. But also, I guess all of the cooking of it kind of got rid of all the germs. So, ah, it's fine if it lands on your pancakes. So what? Um, but I thought it was interesting, like, you know, them actually spending time together. Because obviously she brings up the fact that she's worried about, you know, getting married. Because it's like, well, it's not just a whole thing with her dad. It's also Bump. Because apparently Bump was like on his fourth marriage too. So she's like literally all the people in her life have kind of had shitty marriages and genes have just been complicated and she's scared that like oh like I'm going to repeat the cycle but Cliff is like no nah, you got a good head on your shoulders you're going to be the one to kind of break the cycle he's like I know I sh this is a long time coming like 30 years coming but I should go ahead and say like I am sorry for everything I did all the mess ups he's like I am really sorry you know so and I was wondering whether or not Clara was really going to be like forgiving for her I was wondering like is she putting on a front but it does seem like she genuinely has kind of forgiven her dad and he's trying to do everything for her um also he got super excited when she uh, announced that she wasn't a boy it's so interesting because like in certain ways that she talked because she's like yeah like things are like fucking crazy around here like the way she kind of cusses at some points in time it's like you can definitely tell that that's Cliff's daughter like she you can definitely see elements of Cliff there because he was even saying like yeah like aside from the steel side of the family the fact of the matter is you know you still have your mom's side of the family to kind of contend with like you know in the sense of like that side of your mom's that part of you that is your mom and her side of the family will definitely kind of fight back any instincts that you might have as, you know, my side of the family. Basically, if you have the instinct to run, then stay. That's kind of, you know, trying to give her good advice and everything. But even going through the trouble of, like, you know, doing all this maintenance on her car and everything, and she ends up inviting him to the wedding and everything. He's super excited about it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Because I was wondering like where the relationship was going to be and it's nice to see that. It's going to be interesting when you have to introduce, yeah, this is my robot dad. That's going to be an interesting conversation. She, He said like, oh, nothing's going to stop me from that. The moment he said that, I was like, something's going to stop you from going to. Like, what? Is, I, I guess he's hoping maybe by then Niles will have worked on making him human so he can kind of compensate for it. But it's like... I'm curious to see what that's going to look like. I mean, there's going to definitely be something probably coming up that prevents him from going to the wedding, and that might be issues all on its own, but, you know, we'll kind of have to wait and see on the in the long run. And then another angle to this episode 
is Rita showing off the newspaper to uh, Vic of her, the beekeeper, saving the day and everything. And I love the fact is that um, we get another, like, fantasy montage thing because it's like we had Cliff and Vic earlier this season. Now we got Vic and um, Rita. And I love – it's like, what was it? Vic Stone. Oh, I forgot what was it. Uh, was it Beekeeper and Borg? Is that what it was called? Whatever the case may be. I love that he's literally the center photo of these, like, two fantasized, like, situations. I just thought it was kind of neat. I, I love when they're, they're doing these cutaways like that. Um, but Rita kind of wants to do the whole superhero thing, you know, because Cyborg's kind of wondering where it's coming from. Like, you know, what's this really all about, you know? And so, obviously, there's also, he also notices a murder on the front page. And he's like, oh, I know this is one of the dudes associated with Ronnie and everything that happened to her. So, he goes to investigate. And he's going back to Chicago. and Because I even love he had joked about, like, oh, we'll get you a jet. And we'll call it, we'll paint it black and yellow. And we'll call it the Stinger. And then, like, Reed's just like, oh, fuck you, Vic. Um, <clears throat> Uh, kind of like you know making a fool of her about this whole superhero thing but she tags along and I love that when they get to the crime scene some dude makes some wise ass crack about Junior Justice League so I get I mean to be fair we know his dad's always been prepping him for the Justice League which obviously like you know he goes from Teen Titans to Justice League I mean I'm not once again not well versed in comics so I don't know all the ins and outs about all the, the teams that Cyborg has been a part of I definitely know Teen Titans and Justice League those are the main ones I know about uh, but that, and because obviously in this universe he hasn't been a part of the Justice League. His dad was prepping him to be part of the Justice League, uh, but nevertheless, dude was calling him Junior Justice League, and he's like, "Oh yeah, like what are you guys doing? Like you know all the golfing, you know." And the guy was like, "Oh no, disrespect." He's like, "No, just shove it. Well, tell me about the damn crime scene." And he ends up finding out the reason why they think it's Ronnie because she was literally on surveillance footage when this went down. I even love the lady comes over, like uh, Rita goes over to that lady. She's like, uh, "You do you know?" It's like, "Which one are you?" And she's like, "I'm the beekeeper." You must have read about me. The lady's like, no. And she's like, well, where's my partner, Cyborg? It's like, oh, he just left. And Rita probably felt a little bad. Like, oh, he just kind of up and left me. But obviously, like, he has, you can tell what this means for Vic. And he ends up tracking Ronnie down later on. And, you know, he he's asking questions like, why did you kill that dude? It's like, if you knew what he did to me, you wouldn't ask that. But for him, it's like, you know, you're talking about Cyborg. He's like, I'm a hero. Like, we don't do the whole, like, killing thing, which is obviously that's a... Because it's more because in that particular case, it's not even in self defense. It was cold blooded murder. Because I'm about to say, like people on that team have murdered people too. But it's like, well, to be fair, that has always been most of the time out of self defense, you know. Um, but Ronnie does say like what they had was real. But obviously for Vic, it doesn't matter because now it's you know because once again, it's still it is and it's what I brought up before. Like it brings in the question like was everything between us real? Because she even said she was like. I told you from the beginning who it was. He was who I am. She and he, Vic was like, "No, who you were." She's like, "No, who I am. Like who I was is still who I am. You're the one that got it twisted in believing that I was something else." Because I think, truth be told, is Ronnie wanted to be something else. She was hoped she could be, but now she's back in a position where you know she once again those old habits. I figured it was going to turn to, into this, and Vic tried to stop her, but she ends up laying him out. And the fact of the matter is. He couldn't do anything to stop her because despite everything, his heart's just not in it. He cares about her. And Rita couldn't do anything. I don't know if it's just because Rita's like, oh, you're kind of a friend we kind of come to know. Or is it more so like, to be fair, like Rita's kind of still new to this. So she was actually kind of scared to kind of jump into it, especially like it being wrong. I don't know. She, and Ronnie just walks past her. So that's definitely going to be interesting because I think it asked her if she's going to stop killing and she didn't give an answer so I'm assuming she's not going to stop until everyone that had any part to play with you know removing the tech from her and everything or, or you know probably not just that making her into what they made her into she probably won't stop until they're all dead which is interesting timing uh, just you know on the same you know DC Universe technical like front you know there's a whole Stargirl situation where like Icicle kind of went on a mass murdering like situation after everyone had who had any part to play in his wife's death you know so it, it seems like kind of in a in a similar vein in that regard so it's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go on that front then there's the whole situation with um Dorothy and Niles because Niles knows he's running out of time also love that the communication device is it's not, they're not Reese's uh, cups. They just look like Reese's cups. 
uh, because I'm sure like you probably have to pay out the wazoo to have like the actual used Reese's Cups because it wasn't even the right packaging, but they look like Reese's Cups, but they probably just couldn't tell you they were Reese's Cups. They're probably like, these are chocolate shaped cupped things. That's probably what it is. Regardless, I just thought that was interesting. Like, why the hell is that your former community? Okay. Um, but then like there was a moment Dorothy was bleeding in her dress. I was like, wait, I was like, oh. And because the whole conversation had just happened with Niles where like um, uh, Kip was like, she's maturing and that's what's going to escalate this whole thing. But like uh, Niles is like, no, she's still a little girl. But now it's like showing you like, oh, she's hit puberty. And now and I thought, dude, that lady at that gas station is the MVP. That was actually super sweet. I mentioned, you know, I, w- I would never know. But I- I'm curious like what's uh, I would. I wonder what women look out for each other like like would a woman look after a little girl like that in that regard it just it makes me wonder I was like oh but I mean just having her back like that I was like oh because basically it's like oh basically welcome to the this sisterhood that is womanhood and like you know we got your back I was like that was I was like that's super dope of some stranger to do that to like help some little girl kind of going through that for I was like oh that's super dope um but nevertheless it's also the thing of like you probably don't want to tell your dad because your dad's always going to want you to be your his little girl because this is going to be proof of you growing up. Regardless, she helps uh, Dorothy out and Dorothy, you know, oh, you know, what is my surprise, dad? And it's like, oh, we're going to go to the fair. What do do whatever you want to this day? And she wants to go to the fair, and she's having fun and everything. But periodically, she keeps seeing her mom, and her mom's presenting these boots, and it's like, what the hell is that about? And then, like, there's a moment, like, it keeps happening over and over again, and then her mom pr- comes to her again, and it's like, you're ready, because she puts the fur on her, and she's already wearing the red boots. It's like, you're ready for this. And she turns around, Candle Maker's there, and he's like, it's, it, you can, you don't, you can fight this as much as you want, but it's basically happening, like, now is the time. So, my immediate thought is, like, okay, so, basically... Her mom is saying that you're at that age because you're an adult, basically, not an adult adult, but you reach that older age that it's like, it's time for you. You're in a position, that I think, you're strong enough, you reach that age where you can't fight this thing. You need to fight this thing because if you don't fight Candlemaker, he will get out. So, and obviously she's trying to keep that, but at the same time, Niles is like, you know, obviously he's coughing up blood, like he's running out of time, you know, more and more so. And so when the time comes, like, Kip gets there like oh like because he's there trying to get Dorothy but he realizes it's too late it's like you've been so busy trying to be father of the year you didn't even realize like we've missed our window of opportunity like that candle maker thing is coming and there's no nothing we can do about it so that's definitely going to be interesting to kind of see like what that li- literally uh, what that situation turns into as like you know like Uh, Because I could still, we still don't know too much about that situation, about like the ins and outs of it. Obviously, the group Kip belongs to, like there was something, a calamity was coming, a worldwide calamity. And I'm assuming Candlemaker is that, obviously, because that's what we're preparing for. So now it's out in the open. A lot of interesting storylines kind of going at the same time as this thing that probably, as you know, Niles put it, could basically, didn't he say, like, this thing could literally, I mean, because just as powerful as it is being able to do what it's able to do, it could, pretty, I think he said it could cleave the earth if it wanted to, so, like, we're dealing with, like, a worldwide ending event type of situation, so, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where that goes, you know, especially this whole thing with, um, Dorothy, because I don't, Candlemaker's no longer going to be in her control, so, so much stuff spiraling at the same time, I'm curious to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode, but really that's all I want to talk about, to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it, good day, and goodbye.